Micah chapter 6. Hear ye now what the Lord saith. Listen up. Arise. Contend thou. Oops, come pages. Before the mountains. And let the hills hear thy voice. A lot of preaching to mountains and hills. Something about that. Hear ye, O mountains. I guess they listen better than people do. The Lord's controversy. And ye strong foundations of the earth. That'd be the pillars the Bible speaks of. For the Lord has a controversy with his people. That's the reason. So he's preaching to the mountains and hills saying, listen, you know what? Things are going to happen to you. And this is why it's going to happen to you. Because of my people. There's going to be war and blood shed over you. And destruction. Because of my people. The very first killing in the Bible, it's recorded to say that the blood spoke from the earth. There's a lot of things we don't understand in the Bible. And he will plead with Israel. Though God has a controversy with his people, he will stand up for his people. That's not a controversy. That's not a problem. God loves his people, but when they're bad, they're bad. As a father loves his child, when he needs to be punished, he needs to be punished despite the fact of loving the child. The Bible says even when you, when you scold and chastise a child, you're loving them. But you got to deal with their sin. You got to deal with their trouble. And then you make supplications to God for your children. You pray for your children. While you're pulling that whip on the behind or however, however you do it, pray for the child while you're doing it. Say, Lord, let this kid learn knock some sense into him through his butt. God must know something about the sense of a child when he says, aim for the butt. Come on, kid, get off your butt and you can think. Oh, my people. You ever hear, oh, my God? Here's God saying, oh, my people. How's that for expression? What have I done unto thee? And wherein have I wearied thee? Come on, what did I do to you that you're doing what you're doing, that you are in the state that you're in? Which we learned today as a family reading the Bible all started with Solomon. Testify against me. God's saying, come on, stand up and tell me where I went wrong. But before you get up and open up your big mouth, for I brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. God questions Israel for their disobedience, and now he's going to bring up a history lesson. You know what's good for churches to do every once in a while? Have a testimony night. Don't let it get out of hand. But to speak up and say, this is what God has done for me. Because this is what God's doing to the children of Israel through Micah. I'm giving you a history. I'm telling you what I have done for you. You know what you need to do? You need to go back to Bethel. You need to record your prayers and God answering those prayers. That's what's getting me by today. I'll go through my Bible and see something I put in here, a prayer request. And it's been answered. And I'm in a serious prayer request right now. I know God will get me through. And God is saying, okay, listen, come to me. Tell me where I've gone wrong, but I brought you out of Egypt. Let's start with Exodus, shall we? Let's go all the way back to Exodus, Israel. All right, I brought you out. What did I do wrong there? Nothing? 
and redeemed thee out of the house of servants. You were bondmen. You were in slavery to Egypt. I bought you. I paid for you. Where did I go wrong? No? Nothing wrong? I sent before thee Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. Anything wrong with them? Is there any problems with that? Oh, yeah, some people did have problems with Moses and Aaron. But God took care of that and moved them on. Got a problem with that? God said, testify against me, but let me bring up what I've done for you. Any problems? Oh, my people, again. You just picture God in heaven, right? Hey, Micah. Oh, my people. What would you say, Lord? The expression is usually, oh, my God, and oh, my people. Would God say that in, in a sense of anger? Or would he just say that and says, you know, I just can't believe you. You ever get mad at a child or you just, you're an idiot. You're just an idiot. Get some sense into you, will you? Remember now what Balak, king of Moab, consulted. Numbers. He wanted to curse you people. Anything wrong with that? And what Balaam the son of Beor answered him from Shittim unto Gilgal. All the time say, hey, listen, God ain't going to curse them, buddy. He's going to bless them. I sent you to curse my people three times. You can gather bless them. Anything wrong with that, Israel? You got any problem with that? No. That ye may know the righteousness of the Lord. I stood up for you, Israel. I protect you, Israel. Any problem with that? That's harsh. You ever be, listen, I've just, I've just had moments, this month, I've had a moment where, you know, I was just like, God, you know, this life just sucks. Pain and misery and all that. And you know what God did? He brought me to Calvary. He brought me to that suffering, bleeding, uh, thorn-pierced brow, back opened up, nails driven. He brought, brought me to the suffering, bleeding Messiah and said, okay, what about that? You got a controversy with that? No, Lord, I don't. I just get mad. Forgive this soul, miserable piece of dust that I am. Wherewith shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before the high God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves of a year old? And this is Leviticus priest offering. All right, should I come to the Lord? Should I bring an offering? Leviticus 1, verses 1 through 17. Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams? Getting a little sarcastic, aren't we? How much did, did Solomon offer? And look where he ended up. Or 10,000. Leviticus 2, 1. Rivers of oil. Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression? God never called for that. God never called Israel to, call, to bring their child. The fruit of my body for sin of my soul? No. Exodus 13, 2. Verse, thir verse 6 and 7 are just vain works worship. Yeah, Israel could have done all that. It was prescribed by the law. But they were just doing it to do it and they're not doing it with a complete heart. 
you know, you go to church, because uh, I'm going to church, it's Sunday, go to church, blah, 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 blah. I go to church to be a blessing. I go to church to hear the word. He has shown thee, O man, what is good. The word of God. What's acceptable. And what does the Lord require of thee? All right, here's what God requires. But to do justly. And to love mercy and to walk humbly with thy God God I'll bring you 200 million dollars next church service I don't want it but Lord I, I want it playing in at the slot machines is that just it's gambling just Lord my presence will be there at church you know yeah. What about your attitude at work? Was there mercy? Did you help? Did you guide? Did you what did you do this week? Oh well, Lord, you know, here I am. Are you humble? That's what God wants. God can work with a just, merciful, humbly man. He can't work with an unjust, unmerciful, proud man. He can't work with that. He can't do nothing with that. He can't work with a piece of clay and say, Hey, what are you doing? Get your hands off me. How dare you? I'm the one of the finest Chinas in the cabinet. What are you doing to me? The, Lord, the Lord's voice crieth unto the city. And the man of wisdom shall see thy name. Hear ye the rod. Ooh, ooh, someone's going to get their butt beat. And who has appointed? Hebrews 12, 5. The rod. Because you're sinners. And there are yet the treasures of wickedness in the house of the wicked. And the scant measure that is abominable. Remains sin left over. This full of sin. Sin, 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 sin. Shall I count them, the scant measures of the abominable, pure with the wicked balances and with the bag of deceitful ways? That's, that's not God. It's less than 100% for God. It's, a, it's sin. It's wickedness. For the rich men thereof are full of violence. Here's that word again, violence. And the inhabitants thereof have spoken lies. And their tongue is deceitful in their mouth. There's a great group of people you, you can hang around with, not. Therefore also will I make thee sick. And smiting thee and making thee desolate because of thy sins. Leviticus 26 14. You're just so full of sin. I'll make you sick. You know what Israel was when Jesus Christ showed up? They were sick. They were so sick they even had devils in them. Leprosy. Blindness, deafness, dumbness. Thou shalt eat, but not be satisfied. Can't fill your belly. Not enough. Eat by measure, Jeremiah said in Lamentations. Ezekiel, there'll be a certain measure of food. Thy casting down shall be in the midst of thee, and thou shalt take hold, for thou shalt not deliver. You're going, to, you're going to take a stand, you're going to fall. You'll be in the midst, you'll drop. No victory, but thou shalt not deliver. That which thou deliverest, all right, in case you do deliver, 
will I give up to the sword? There's no victory in sin. Absolutely none at all. Thou shalt sow, plant, seeds, gardens, vineyards, but thou shalt not reap. Thou shalt tread the olives. There's a crop. It's in been picked it's been harvest thou shalt not anoint thee with oil it's not gonna be enough it's gonna be stolen it's gonna be bad olives and sweet wine grapes but thou but shalt not drink wine Hagar 1 5 or Haggai 1 5 Whatever you do is going to have no benefit. The harder you work, the worse it will be. For the statues of Amri, idolatry, are kept. Don't you... If anybody's ever followed us from Genesis 1 to Micah chapter 6, wouldn't you get the idea that God's against idolatry? Wouldn't you just get that sneaking... Exp uh, you know, suspicion that idols, imagery, and all that is just wrong. And can't you see how religion has tacked people and attached them to their sin? The Bible says, in, in how many chapters have we got? I, I can't bring it up right now. But how many chapters have we studied as a family and we put on these, these videos and extra ones I've done in on the street and all that that we have preached against through reading the Bible against idolatry and yet it's still prominent. You you've got Baptist churches today. Never mind the Catholic. You got Baptist churches. They got a plaque on the wall. This is the guy that started this church. It may be in a picture of him. Oh, ah, oh, a founder, founder. He's long gone. He's dead. And so has your church. You walk in some churches around certain times of the year and there's a lighted tree. That's idolatry according to Jeremiah. How can you get around it? We were in a church one time. It was, that, it was the Christmas season. And we went right around Jeremiah, the Christmas tree. We completely just left. Couldn't speak about that. Easter. Churches are involved with Easter. That's a Roman holiday. 2016. I'm not talking about the Dark Ages. I'm talking about not a time when there was no Bible. When the only Bible that was was the, the pastor of the church. I'm talking about where everyone can get a Bible, get it under lap, look it up online, look up all the facts that are in the internet and still are involved. With what God hates. I mean how many Christians out there. Who haven't studied the Bible. As far as we are now to Micah chapter 6. Would even be so stupid enough. To watch a program called American Idol. And profess to be a Christian. And allow their children. I've seen this. Uh, pastors grandchildren in their room. Posters on a wall of people. Um, loose leaf notebooks of cards about people. That's idolatry. You walk down the street and you got someone's number on the back of your on the back of your shirt. That's idolatry. If you know more about a particular person, movie, team, or what have you, if you know more about that thing than you know about the Bible, that's idolatry. And all the works of the house, here's a great name, Ahab. 
1 Kings 21, 25, and 20. Read Ahab and see why his name is mentioned there. As far as some Christians, they made the only name of Ahab would be a pirate. And ye walk in their counsels. You do exactly what the heathen do. Christian. Well, we, we, we call it Christian. We call it Christianity. We call it for Jesus. Call it a sin. How's that? It brings the teens together. It brings the children to know the gospel. Call it sin. And you think God's going to use that sin for good? Really? I can imagine you can find some good use for cyanide. But, you know, go ahead and just put it in the drinks. Poison. This whole chapter is about sin and the consequences. And we, 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 me, dabble in it. One more lap around and we can get by. And what we don't see coming up around the bend is a big wreck. And the destruction. And we pray to God, help us out. We all do that. That I should make thee desolation. Why is God doing all this to Israel? Sin. And the inhabitants thereof and hissing. That's not a good thing in the Bible. That's the next best sound to a snake. After he dealt with Eve. Before Eve he talked. After Eve. Therefore ye shall bear the reproach of my people. Who shall bear it? He's been talking to the mountains and the hills. You know what the mountains and hills would say if they could speak? God, they killed people upon us. I know, I hear the blood of Abel. God, you see them offering incense on top of us, trying to reach to the gods? Yeah, I see that. God, did you see them taking their firstborn child and killing them? I saw that. God's preaching to the mountains and hills because that's where they're worshiping these gods. This is where their worship service is. In groves. And in druids. And yule logs. And evergreen trees. And bonfires. Family picnics. This is all going on in the mountain and hills. And God's saying, listen. What they're doing in you right now. This is why it's going to happen. God's pleading with the mountain and hills for his people. So when you preach on, a, on the, when you preach to the public, maybe the people are not hearing, maybe the land's hearing. When we preach in Daytona, maybe the, the land of Daytona, yeah. We see it. We take record of it. That guy spoke about you, God. You should hear what they speak when they're gone. You know, rocks record sound. I wonder how much God is recording us. Because the Bible says in Matthew, every idle word you shall give an account. Maybe something with Mother Nature will be a witness against us. I don't say I believe in Mother Nature. 
we got so much we got to give an account to and there's so much around us that will stand witness yay or nay I don't know but I do know one thing sin has a consequence and it's never good I want to go home to heaven I'm here for a reason today, but I want to go home. From, I want to get out of sin. I want to get away from it. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of consequences of it. When God removes sin away from me and my body, I'm going to have a new body. I'll have no more pain, no more sorrow, no more tears, no more heartache, no more anger, no more red lights, no more sarcasm, no more stupid people. No more people rejecting Jesus Christ. No more aches. No more making God ashamed of me. How bad is sin when you've got to study from Genesis 1 to Micah chapter 6? How bad is sin? How does sin mark? I'll tell you exactly how sin marks. When you see Jesus Christ in glory, he still has the print of the nails in his hands and his feet. They're there forever. And I'm only here a lifetime. They talk about over the hill. I'm 47 years old, something like that. I don't know where the hill is in my life. If I'm going to be 90 years old when I die, I'm on the peak of the hill. If I'm going to be 120, I'm just marching up the hill. Hope not. Because I'm just marching up the hill right now. Ooh wee. I need an escalator to get to the top. But if I'm going to die next month, if I'm going to die next year, I'm up and over the hill rolling down. One day you'll lay this body in the grave. One day this body will be called up to glory. I will be judged at the judgment seat of Christ. Everything I've done not for God, everything I've done for lust, everything I've done for Satan, everything I've done for the world, everything I've done for myself will burn up in ashes, will go away. I'll never go to hell. I will live pain free, suffering free. And when I see the hands of my Savior, what will I remember then? You can't say in turn, we're going to look at those hands and say, Duh, what was that for? Like, I don't know what we're going to do. When we get heaven, you see a Christian, and they, they ain't got no crowns, no rewards at all. So where'd, you, where'd your crown go? I don't think that's going to happen. We're going to have some kind of sense. Because why not just give us all rewards? Give us all crowns. Some lose them. And to realize that I think I'm so big, and God is, you know, and he bears in his hands in New Jerusalem. The marks of Isaiah 53 that he bore for me. And I go into New Jerusalem with a pure, undefiled, unmarked, holy, sinless, righteous body. Something ain't fair. And then we read a chapter like this. Earthquakes in Japan. Volcanoes in Japan. Why would mean nasty God do that? Because they've been rejecting him all these years, raping and killing people, and going into nations and just slaughtering them. Let's get the truth. Let's turn off the public school system, throw them in a the garbage can, and let's preach the truth about these people. How wicked they are.
And they're enjoying their sins. And they're lavishing in their sins. Romans chapter 1. And what we learned so far, sin is serious. God takes it very serious. How serious does he take it? He left heaven and born in a manger and took on the nature of man, cried, was hungered, a slept, weep, a thirst, despised, rejected, scorned, spit it upon, beaten, bruised. That's how serious God takes sin.